Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Luke, my videographer, asked me to make a ring for him and I said, well, I don't know if our relationship's quite gotten to that, but let's dive in. As with all Wood by Wright projects, we're gonna be starting this off with African Blackwood, Paduke, and of course, White Oak. Yeah, you didn't think I'd leave that out. <laughs> now, I've made a couple of these in the past, and I've done one out of a solid piece, and those don't last quite as well. It's usually best if you laminate them. And all of these pieces have actually been, uh, they've been stabilized, so they are fully filled with polymer, uh, and they will not move quite as much, but they also make them a little bit stronger so that they hold together better. Uh, these need to be very, very thin pieces, so we're basically making thick veneer. Um, I have done one other one where I took a bunch of veneers and glued them all up, but then it ends up just being colors and strips, and I actually wanted to see some of the wood grain in this. So we're going to make five layers on this, and each one is a little bit thinner than an eighth inch. It's a really, really thin stuff. And also keep in mind, the bigger you make the ring, the stronger it's going to be, the longer it's going to last. But that also means that uh, it's a big ring, and big rings don't always feel good on the hand. So we can cut them down to thickness and then plane them down. We're going to start with planing one side perfectly smooth. That gives us something we can glue to. And then the other side is a little bit more difficult. We'll cover that in here in a moment. These pieces are small enough that I'm actually resawing with a dovetail saw, which uh, sounds a bit confusing, but yeah, that's what you need. It's a you're ripping and it's a short rip and a dovetail saw works great for this. We're going to cut these all down to about the same size. We're starting with something about an inch and a half by an inch and a half ish, um, give or take. Uh, we want to make it bigger than it needs to be so that we have something to play with because uh, we can always make it smaller, but we can't always make it bigger. And it depends on the ring you're making. If you're making a small ring, you can get smaller pieces. For planing them all down, I love double sided tape. And you can put them all down on the surface with the surface that you have already planed flat, and then you can plane them down and the tape holds them in place. This is a tiny piece of of a wild, wild, curly white oak. And I, it's one of the last couple pieces that I had from that board. And I absolutely love it. And it has so much detail in the grain that even on something small like this, you'll still be able to see the, the grain coming through. So we're going to resaw this down the middle. And this will give us two pieces. And we don't need to plane off all the sides on it because we're going to be laminated to the middle. Now for the glue on this, we're going to be using epoxy because uh, they were stabilized, so there is resin inside. The epoxy will hold it better. Plus the epoxy is one of the strongest, longest lasting glues. So if anything, this will give it the absolute best chance. The nice thing with epoxy is we don't have to put a lot of pressure onto it. We can put a decent amount on there, but we don't have to crazy crush it down. So we're going to do the white oak and then the paduke and then blackwood in the middle and then reverse them from the other side. Paduke and then white oak on the outside. And I wasn't quite sure how these would go together because eventually the black the Paduke turns brown, but it will never be quite as dark as the blackwood and it will never be quite as light as the white oak. So there should always still remain co uh, colored layers. It's just they won't be quite as vibrant as they are right off the bat. So we're going to sandwich these together, squeeze them down. Uh, we're going to put four squeeze clamps on here and let it sit. We're going to let this completely and fully cure. I actually let it sit for two weeks until we came back and pulled it off. And there is our block. So um, how exactly do we go about turning this into a ring? Luke's current ring ended up being about a size 11, and he wanted it to be a hair bigger, so we're going to bump this up to a size 11 and a half. And that means we need to figure out how does that actually translate. So putting on the mandrel lets me know what size it is, and then I can bring that over to a wooden size. And this hole is a little bit smaller than it needs to be. This would actually make it somewhere around a 10 and a half, 10 and three quarter. And then I can come back in with a file and bring it open just a little bit. Now, at this point, you could stick your finger in there and test it, but last time I made Made one, I had the problem of I stuck my finger in there and I couldn't get my finger out and I had a block of wood in the vise and I had to call my daughter down from upstairs to come and take me out. I'll leave a link to the old video. It was actually rather hilarious. And I'm also going to drill a hole through my uh, hand screw vise into the uh, into the ring. And this way I'm not going to have any splinters out because it's very important that this be solid. I'm going to use um, a pre-drill of an eighth inch hole all the way through this so that the lead screw on the auger bit doesn't split it out. We're going to work it down in there and then put a block lock in back for it to go into. And so this whole thing sandwiches together so that I get a nice, clean, straight hole all the way through it without it splitting out. And then I realized, oh wait, now it's just gonna rotate inside. So I squeezed it down more and it still rotated. And I squeezed it down more and it still rotated. 
And so then I put another clamp on there and that actually held it and kept it from rotating. <laughs> you live and you learn. Uh, so we just keep on going through this and I'm taking it nice and slow. I'm not chipping anything out. I'm letting the blades do the work. Um, just letting them go at whatever speed they want. Once we get all the way through, then theoretically we have a hole going through the middle that's just a little bit too small. We can come in with a file and open it up until it's really close. At this point, you could try and fit it under your ring, um, but you want to make sure you round over the edges. You don't want the sharp edges on there, otherwise you're going to have a hard time getting it off. Um, so I, I don't actually try it on until we get the outside a little bit smaller as well. But we can come through here and clean off the edges, make sure that they're soft, just in case we do decide to stick it on a finger, we can get it off. Now, I want to make the outsides, um, I left those a lot bigger than they are, so we can actually use a file to plane them down. Um, because at this point, I really don't want to take a plane into this. We're just going to be using files and rasps. Rasps allow you to do a large amount of work, and then come in with the file and get it a little closer. Uh, for the big corners, we can come into the saw and hack those off and basically turn it into an octagon. And then from an octagon, you can rasp it down into close to a circle. And then you can figure out how thick do you want the walls in this. The thicker you make it, the stronger it is, the longer it's going to last. But the thinner you make it, the better it feels. So you're kind of playing this whole balance back and forth of how thick do you actually want to make this. I ended up making it just over an eighth inch thick. Um, that's a little thicker than most people like it, but Luke has big hands and that actually felt uh, felt pretty good to it. And he's actually been wearing this ring now for, I think it's been about a month now and uh, has been enjoying it. So yeah, um, I'm gonna use some calipers to mark in from the inside all the way around about how thick I want it to be. And you get that little line on there on both sides and then you can come in with the rasp and rasp it down until you just touch that line on all sides. This will let you know you're really close to round. The rasp gets you close close to where you want to be, and then the file comes in and details it. You also want to use this movement where you start vertical and then rotate across. And if I'm just removing a lot of material, I'll just keep in one place. But if I'm getting close to my line, I'm going to rotate the rasp as it comes up and over the ring. This will give me a nice smooth surface. And uh, it also makes it so you're less faceted and more of a, a rounded, smooth feeling. <laughs> and at this point, uh, this whole process took uh, about half an hour, 45 minutes. It's one of those things that feels like it's going to take a lot longer, but when you really get to it, uh, it goes pretty quickly. We're going to round over the edges just a little bit, and I'm using my finest rasp to get it close to its shape. And then we're going to come in with a relatively coarse file. And then we're going to come in with a medium file. And then we're going to come in with a really fine file. And you're just taking it down until you get it really, really close. Now, it's around this point you're starting to think about uh, the finish you want on this. What do you want? Do you want a high glass surface or do you want to feel the wood? And we decided to go with something a little more standard. Uh, we're just going to be using uh, boiled linseed oil and paste wax on it. And one of the big reasons for that is you're going to feel it and your finger's going to be rubbing on there and having that little bit of texture just, it feels nice. You would, you would think you want something to be perfectly smooth, but actually having something that has a little bit of texture in it is, is um, it's a nice touch. The last little details on this I'm just going to do on my, on my leg with a fine, fine file. And we're going to be just slowly detailing it down. I'll bring in the sandpaper, and then the sandpaper will show me spots where there are highs and there are lows, and I'll come in with the file again and clean them out. Um, a lot of times you won't be able to feel them, but you'll actually be able to see it if you sand it. And then that'll allow me to come back in and touch it up with the file again. And then I'll sand it again, and I'll touch it up with the file again. I'm just keeping on going until I get a nice, smooth, clean surface, taking it little bit by little bit, making sure there's no scratches, there's no detents in there. And uh, yeah, take your time on this, and eventually you'll get down to it. And I'm really liking where this is going, like which is into four. the boiled linseed oil. And this is the point which, oh uh, yeah, especially with this white oak on the outside, it just after. explodes in color. How's that look? And <laughs> yes, I love the way this thing came out. We can wipe it off, let it soak up as much as it wants, and then we can come in with the paste wax, apply the paste wax, let it sit on there, and then polish it off. And there's the ring. I absolutely love how this one came out. I think it's one of my favorites of the, the rings that I've made so far. And Luke has been enjoying it and now wearing it for almost a month. So they're not that hard to make. They're kind of fun, and it only takes a few hours. So have a little bit of fun and enjoy it because I really like this one. Lots of fun. So there you have it. I think this is the third ring I've now made on Wood by Wright, and I think this is my favorite. The colors in this between the, the Paduke and the African Blackwood, it's just, yeah, this is really, really cool. 
he wanted one to wear that wasn't metal or silicone, and so we thought wood. And especially with this one being uh, homemade plywood with the grains going different directions, uh, it should last a, a decent amount of time. So yeah, um, I really like how this one came out. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, what could I do better on that? What, uh, what could I learn from this? What could we try next time? If there's something you'd like me to do, let me know that in the comments down below. I do read through all of them, and I get a lot of ideas from that, as well as I answer any questions that come up on there. So thank you for that. It does actually help out the channel. Anytime you hit the like, share, subscribe, uh, that really helps us get in front of more people. Algorithm is king, as well as all of these people over here. Those are all of the patrons on Patreon. Without patrons, um, we wouldn't exist, and they are all of the kings and queens of Wood by Right. So thank you for that. Uh, if you would like to find out more about Patreon, we have links in the description below, or you can click the little join button to become a member here on YouTube. We have special perks for both, and really that means more than I can say because without you guys, we wouldn't exist. We're completely sponsored by you. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Do you guys hear that? Or is it just a ring in my ear?